again. Welcome to week six. Uh, we are talking about production design. And production design is also the subject of the Paul Schrader article this week that we're reading. So these will line right up and give you a clue um, as to what production de design is and why it's so important. So let's start. What is it? Production design and the production designer uh, and their team are responsible for everything in front of the camera on the day of the shoot except the actors. The actors are casting, right? That's coming from casting. But what they're wearing, their makeup, their wigs, their props, the furniture, the uh, sets are all the responsibility of the production designer. Um, and uh, oftentimes this involves building things, creating things from thin air um, to uh, create a, uh, an environment that only existed in the, in the mind of the director and the screenwriter. And the process for production design comes from the screenplay, right? There's a screenplay. In the screenplay, there are, there, there are descriptions of where we are, what it looks like, who's there, what they're wearing, what they're holding. And from those descriptions, the production designer, in collaboration with the director, is making lists, is drawing sketches, is buying things, is designing things, is building things um, to bring to life this imaginary world that exists on paper. So here we have Beetlejuice, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, two Tim Burton movies. Tim Burton movies um, are production design, right? You can't imagine a Tim Burton movie without the wild sets, the crazy costumes, the unbelievable props. Uh, that's such a critical part of the filmmaking that, that he does and the stories that he tells. Production design is such a critical, critical aspect of those films. Now, from the beginning of the semester, we've been talking about mise-en-scene, every detail matters. That exactly is the, the thinking of the production designer. They're responsible for every detail from the mechanical shark uh, we see in the background of this shot from Jaws to the fake blood in the water to the cigarette in the actor's mouth. From the minor, minor, minor detail to the biggest, biggest, you know, most expensive flamboyant uh, prop or uh, uh, set that we've got going on, that's all the production design responsibility. And it's all critical for creating and the illusion and creating the scene. We need the shark. The cigarette is communicating who this character is, right? The glasses, uh, the blood in the water, all every detail matters and builds up. And in fact, that's one of the critical things that um, uh, make big, uh, fantastic movies so enjoyable for all of us. We love to be taken into these new worlds where uh, every detail has been attended to and it's uh, all working uh, for the benefit of the story and to move us emotionally. Sometimes production design is big and expensive and elaborate. And that's what's best suited, you know, needed to tell the story. Sometimes production design, as in this example, is inexpensive very subtle and and uh, not eye-catching, right? We probably could recreate this image from the, the film Francis Ha with Greta Gerwig. We could probably recreate this on the campus, uh, Oakland University campus, for 50 bucks, right? So it's not how much you spend, it's how well you execute it and how well it connects to the story you're trying to, trying to tell. This story isn't about creating some fantastic alternate universe where things are crazy or kooky or extreme. It's about creating a very natural, typical feeling environment for this character for them to interact in. Right? Like a movie we saw like uh, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore has tons of production design going into that. Everybody's wardrobe, every detail, all the houses and apartments and the diner. 
However, we aren't drawn to it because the, 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 the goal of that production design isn't to draw attention to itself. It's to blend into the background and create this illusion, still an illusion, but the illusion that we're flies on the wall in this natural world where these characters are just living their lives, right? That doesn't happen by accident. And bad production design, gaudy, glaring, if it doesn't fit in, it would ruin that illusion and ruin a drama like Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Here's an example of over-the-top, eye-catching uh, production design, Indiana Jones. That boulder had to be created. It had to, the, the whole cave had to be created so that it would roll down, uh, right, uh, and uh, threatening Indiana Jones. The statue, the golden statue he's holding, had to be designed and created. All these images initially were on, in the imagination of the screenwriter. They then show up on the page of the screenplay, and then they're translated into what we're seeing here. Now, if Indiana Jones was being made today, which in fact, right, the, there are these sequel, Indiana Jones sequel uh, being made today, the boulder scene would have much less uh, um, real life set, right? They would do that today with a lot more computer animation and green screen than they did back in the 80s, right? It would be Harrison Ford running in front of green screen and the boulder would be created in, in uh, uh, 3D animation and placed in the background. Now, it's still the production designer's responsibility to design uh, and conceptualize what that all looks like behind the actor, whether it's created out of wood and plaster or it's created out of pixels by the animators. It's still the production design, it's still the same creative process, sketches, ideas that are then handed off to the artists who are either creating it physically or in the virtual, re virtual world uh, through 3D animation. Either way, it's production design. Modern films, it's almost impossible for us to tell the difference of what's really there and what's digitally created. And for our purposes in this class, that's not our problem. Our, our job isn't to spot what's really there, what's fake, et cetera, et cetera. Our job is to take in the mise-en-scene and analyze it, describe it, and discuss why specific choices were made and how it worked for the story. Now here's a great example of production design from a film uh, still from a, a Grand Budapest Hotel, which we watched. Wes Anderson, kind of like Tim Burton, his films are so uh, heavily uh, uh, designed in production design, right? The wardrobes, the costumes, the makeup, the prop, the models, uh, all are... Uh, uh, such fine attention to detail, and it's overwhelming when you watch it. The experience of watching a Wes Anderson film, and, and the intention, part of that is to be just sort of overwhelmed and have all this detail, all this mise-en-scene sort of just wash over you. So here we have Ray Fiennes standing at his desk in the hotel, and for example, the shelving behind him is red, is painted red for a reason, right? Uh, the keys have been hung up in a particular pattern to give a particular impression. His purple jacket, uh, the pins on his jacket, the paper on the desk, all of this detail doesn't just show up by itself, right? It doesn't just happen. It's the work of a designer going off of the ideas of the screenwriter and the director with a team, an army of people painting purchasing, buying, sewing, building, placing in just the right way to create um, uh, fantastic experiences like Grand Budapest Hotel. And as I said earlier, for our purposes, it doesn't matter whether that shelf behind Ray Fiennes is really there or if he's standing against a green screen. The effect is the same, and that's always what we're talking about. Describing what we see, what's the effect, why were those chase choices made? And off we go from there. So, is it good when we notice the production design? Or is that bad? I think the answer to this question is, it depends on the film. In a Tim Burton or a Wes Anderson movie, I think it's good. I think the intention is for the production design to be a big 
uh, conscious part of the experience. You think about it. You see it. You, uh, you know, you're you're meant to notice it. Now, in a film like Jaws or When Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, the production design, the goal of that production design is to be invisible, is to subconsciously give us the impressions um, of these characters, create the real world, but not draw attention as uh, to themselves at, for being artificial. That would work against the goal of a film, uh, a dramatic, realist film like that. Okay, so that's production design, what we're looking for this week. Here are the two films we're watching. First, Parasite, South Korean film directed by Bong Joon-ho, uh, a South Korean director. And this film was a worldwide hit. It won the Academy Award here in the United States. It was the first foreign language film ever to do that. Um, if you didn't get a chance to see it, this is your chance, and I, I, think, I, I think you'll find it really interesting. It's a unique film. If you've seen it before, I, this movie uh, only gets better with repeated viewings, particularly this week because we're looking at production design. You can pay more attention to some of the production design elements going on in the film. And our second film is also an Academy Award winner, Moonlight. This film won the Best Picture Award maybe the year before Parasite, maybe two, I can't remember, but in, uh, it also won. And the director of this film is an American named Barry Jenkins, who went to school down in Florida. I think he, he's originally from Florida. This, this film is a bit autobiographical. Um, and uh, another great film, if you haven't seen it, um, I, I, I think you'll enjoy it. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, and hearing about your thoughts on this. So... What are we looking for this week while we're watching the films? And this uh, will be the post on the forum. Pick one of these to respond to. Of course, no surprise, we're talking production design. So here, uh, here are what we're, we're looking at. Number one, give an example of how production design was used to convey class difference or conflict in the film. Two, give an example of how production design was used to convey story or emotion in the film. And then three, was production design critical to the film? How would a scene have been different with different or less effective production design? And that's practicing using that rhetorical strategy of if this had been this choice, this other choice, the film would have been so different and that helps your argument with uh, why the choices you're describing were so important, okay? All right, I look forward to reading uh, your thoughts on the forum, and I hope you enjoy the films. See you on Moodle.